is your blessing, your miracle, your healing, your deliverance is your connecting to the vision. Because what am I doing? I'm lifting up somebody else. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about everybody else you can lift up. Everybody that you can be a blessing to. Come on, y'all can shout act crazy or something. Welcome to A Father's Heart with Dr. Phil Godot. Dr. Brenda Godot. We are a family-friendly church that teaches the Word of God so you can live an effective Christ-centered life. This is where the Word works when you work the Word. And now, our A Father's Heart broadcast. Watch this here. Watch this here. Any of y'all ever had anybody at your house and they violated you? They got, they got out of control, didn't know how to behave in your house? Anybody ever came in your house and cut up in your house and you wish they wouldn't have never came? Come on, get your hands up. Huh? All of a sudden you get them to come to your house, they ain't got no, have no kind of a couth and no kind of mannerisms and, and, and how to act. You know, when I, when I was a kid, my mama, when, if I was going to go to somebody's house, my mama would tell me, you better behave yourself. Right. Come on, somebody. She said, you better behave yourself. And she said, listen to me, if they, if they have something to eat, act like you got something at home. Right. Don't go over there trying to eat up everybody, all their food up over there. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Act like you didn't eat before. I, and you know, it would be cold. Mama didn't send me over there, didn't feed me. I'm hungry. And I'm sitting there and I'm trying to act like I didn't eat already. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So I'm, my, my mama taught me how to behave when I go to somebody's house because she told me if I didn't act right, she was going to spank me. Yeah. And my mama believed in corporal punishment. So I learned how to, don't be running around, don't be doing this, and, you know, all the kind of stuff. Y'all, some of y'all, about three of y'all know what I'm talking about. The rest of y'all need deliverance for yourself, okay? <laughs> but I remember one time I had some people come over my house. I had some people come over my house. Well, actually, I am still got a little challenge with it. But I invited some family members over to my house, and then my family members invited some other people, and then some other people invited somebody else. And I had some downright gangsters in my house. <laughs> I had Bebe and Bebe's mama and Bebe's uncle and, and, uh, and Kooky mama and everybody was over there. And I'm telling you, they were just running through my house and breaking things and just acting, just out of control. And, and I couldn't, I mean, they were just going. I had to go and stand in front of the door of my bedroom and guard my bedroom in my own house because, because these people then acted crazy and out of control. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Out of control. They don't know how to behave. Just as wild as they can be. Boy, finally I was able to start trying to get them out of here. I started, anybody remember Mickey Mouse? It's time to say to all my company. M-I-C, see you real soon. Hey, why get on out of here now? M O U S E, get on out. Get on out. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Man, I was singing that song. Man, it's time for y'all to go. Man, I'm telling you, that was one of the most disturbing times. I hate it when you invite somebody and then they're going to invite somebody without them. They were invited, then they're going to invite somebody who. They invited who wasn't invited. Then they come over and violate you. You know, them people were so wild. I'm telling you, they were so wild. When I was getting them to leave, they were grabbing things. Then I had cake up. I had a big cake up here. I forgot what the party was. I had a big cake. Do you know they started grabbing cake and putting it in their pocket? I know it was some of y'all family members. I know that for sure. Putting cake putting cake in their pocket. That's how crazy that situation was. I got control now, though, ain't they? Ain't. I got control now. Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm long on, on, on information now. But, but you understand how you behave, how you conduct yourself. So uh, uh, in the book of Ephesians, it says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined unto his spouse. So when you leave the world, when you leave the world, you're supposed to leave the world. 
See, some people want to bring the world in here and start acting any kind of way they want to and then want God to bless them or think, well, I just want God to bless me without doing anything. Listen to me. I can't stand a child that wants you to buy everything for them and they don't want to contribute to nothing in the house. Don't want to don't want to clean their room up. Don't want don't want to wash the dishes. Don't want to take the garbage out. Don't want to do nothing. But they want mama or daddy to do everything for them. I'm against that. Right, right, right. Then they're going to have nerve enough to get mad at mama because she don't get, or daddy because they don't get anything for them when they, when they haven't contributed nothing to the house. Something to matter with you living in the house, sleeping on my sheet, burning up my electricity, and, and, and eating my food and all that. And then you want me to pay for you to stay in my house. When I say that, you know what I'm saying? No, you don't know what I'm saying, but I'm going to tell you what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Is that because the kids nowadays think that if you ask them to do any kind of work, you should pay them to do it. Or they calling you slave labor. You call slave labor. No, baby, this is what you're supposed to learn. It's called chores. It's called learning how to work. It's learning how to contribute to the house. When you're eating all the food, then they're going to get mad. And then want to get them mad enough to get mad enough and, and talk a little sassy to their mama or their daddy. You understand what I'm talking about? And the kids, kids, kids nowadays, they're just out of control. They think they can just live and demand, live and demand, and don't contribute. Come on, I'm talking to them. They think they can just live in your house and demand everything, but don't contribute. Come on, say it one more time. They think they can live in your house and demand everything, but don't contribute. And you brought that out of the world, and you brought it right in here. You ain't, it's the same spirit. You're living here in this house, you're being fed, you're being taken care of, but then you don't want to contribute. Oh, y'all don't want to clap now. Oh, you don't want to say nothing now. Coming to Sacramento, 2015, Calvary Christian Center celebrates 35 years of ministry. It's March Miracles. He created you a specific, very unique way. To honor the event, we're inviting some five-star generals. We have to watch ourselves so that we don't get snared by the words of our mouth. In Isaiah 53, verses 5 and verses 11, it says, He took our sins, He took our trespasses, He took our iniquities. Why? So that we wouldn't have to have them. We wouldn't have to be under the curse, nor would our family. It's March Miracles, exclusively in the capital city at Calvary Christian Center in Sacramento. For information on how you can help us celebrate, just head to our website. March Miracles is back. Fellowship Covenant Ministries International is just weeks away from launching a brand new service exclusively for our members. We're taking our ministry and business training programs out of the classroom and placing them live on the internet. Our staff understands that we all have very busy and active lives. That's why we're bringing classes directly to your laptop, smartphone, or device. We're now crafting online training modules to help you strategically build your ministry or business. From the convenience of your home or even at work, you'll be able to watch live seminars on topics such as how to use multimedia and social media to market your organization, the basics of business planning and expansion. And if you miss a live event, it will always be available to watch at your convenience. Our active members already understand the value of FCMI. So important because of the role between the king and the priest. Stay tuned. It's almost here. It's a different thing now. It's in you. See, you ain't no different from your kids. If you're not doing anything, hey, ain't nobody scared of you. I ain't scared of y'all. If you want your life to be changed, you want 2015 to be the greatest year of your life, you got to change your attitude. You got to start taking some responsibility to start doing something to contribute so God has responsibility. Look what it says. Put it back on the screen. Look what it says here. And, and secondarily, prophet, thirdly, teachers, and after that, what? Come on, everybody. Come on. What is that? Miracles. Miracles and then the gifts of what? Healing. And what's the next word? Hell. 
And what's the next word after that? See, we don't want to talk about those. Oh, I just want them, them miracles and them healings to take place. I just want God to bless me with miracles and healings and, and favor and finances and blessings that come on my life. And God said, what you doing to get anything? <laughs> Turn to the and tell me, if you could look at your face right now, you would be laughing at yourself right now. <laughs> You'd be laughing at yourself right now. <laughs> huh? Huh? What are you contributing? What are you giving back? What are you doing now that you're in the house? So there's nothing no different from you being able to go in there and say, well, I want, I want this, Lord. Yeah, I want you to do this and do that. But then you're not giving back. So what's happening? What's happening? Miracles. Come on, stay with me. Miracles and healings and everything else that go along with that is evading you. So you can have a lot of Christians that are in the church that love God like you and even tied and going to church, but the things are not happening for you because you're not putting your hands on the vision. Shout at somebody and say, put your hands on the vision. You got to, you got to put your hands on the vision. What is the vision? What is the vision? Everything to do with the edifying or the building up the church. See, you got to put your hands, you got to be busy working in some kind of capacity to help the ministry to go forth. For the edifying, what it says, for the for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You got to be involved. Your blessing is showing your thanksgiving through your willingness to work. Amen. Amen. I know, I know y'all ain't used to this shit, but that's, that's, that's the way it is. Okay, look with me. In verse, uh, look with me in the book of the same chapter. Give me verse 18. Verse 18 in the same chapter. Verse 18. So would you write this down for me, please? Would you write this down for me? Because this is where that the whole area of the enemy works real hard. So helps ministry is just as important in God's eyes as pastoral or apostles or prophets, or evangelists. There's no difference for God. All of us are on the same level when you work. See, so you'll see me and say, oh, God's blessing him because he's the pastor. He's blessing me because I'm being obedient and I'm doing it. See, he was blessing me just like he's blessing me now back before I became a pastor because I was busy working. You know, Brenda, when I married Brenda, Brenda was in her church. She was one of the most busiest people in her church, just like I was in the church that I was in. And God has blessed us ever since then because we've always been busy putting our hand to the vision. What is the vision? Whatever God has told that man of God to do. So we got G12. We got the we got the youth ministry, we got the children ministry, we got usher and greeters, we got the nursery, we got audio, video, television ministry going on and on. See, you got to find somewhere, put your hand to something, and then that's when God says, now miracles can flow in your direction. Now healings can flow in your direction. Now things that have been eluding you have a right to flow in your direction because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now look with me in 1 Timothy 3 and 15 real quickly. 1 Timothy 3 and 15. 1 Timothy 3 and 15, it says, But if, thou, if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest, oughtest to what? Yay. Come on, everybody, how you oughtest to what? Yay. Come on, say it loud, how you oughtest what? Yay. How you should behave thyself in the what? In the house of who? God. How you should behave yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the what kind of God? Living God. Which is the church of the living God and the pillar and the ground of what? Truth. Now you got to get a hold of that. Listen to me. This is not just something. Look what he said. I, I pray that if I had to tell you, you know how to, you should learn how to behave. Change the way you act and do before now that you're in the kingdom of God and how you should behave in the house of God which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of truth. So what the enemy wants you to do is get away from being able to be connected to the living God who is the pillar and the ground of truth in your life because you're not being connected, because you're not as thankful or recognize what you should be doing. And I tell people, people come to me and say, well, pastor, you know, I'm disabled or pastor, I got uh, uh, this thing or I'm too busy. I got all this work schedule and that I don't have no time. I said, listen to me, there's not one of you in here. Not one of you in here that I can't find something for you to do. Amen. 
I don't care how busy your schedule is. I don't care what your handicap is. I got something for you to do. Turn your neighbor and ask them, what part of that you don't understand right now? I got something for you to do. Every one of you. And then some of you can do more than somebody else. And that's just going to increase your value or your blessing. Coming soon to Sacramento, our Creative Evangelism for Church Growth Conference. We will have workshops on how to reach this generation by using creative evangelism in multimedia, through theatrical arts, and even through comedy. Pastors, ministers, and church leaders learn how to use the visual arts as an outreach tool in your community. Mark your calendar for our Creative Evangelism for Church Growth Conference. For more information on this upcoming conference, just visit our website. Now, write this down, write this down, write this down. And that is, is that when you come into this area of understanding that helps ministry or the fingers on your hand to assist the vision. Helps ministry is or the fingers of God that he's given you to assist his vision. To assist his vision. See, what the enemy doesn't want you to do is to assist God's vision, to be able to make things happen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So he works real hard to keep you from being connected. Also, the helps ministry shows up and causes God's presence to be in a greater way. When helps ministry show up, when you show up, talking about you, when you show up, you call God's presence to manifest in a bigger way. See, now what we want is we want God's presence to show up even today. But see, a lot of times God's presence is being hampered because of a lack of people who say they love him that are not showing up. So if we got, we got all these instruments, all that stuff up there, and you just got one place, person up there, maybe playing the guitar, but you don't have the rest of the people up there, they hamper and hold back the presence of God from showing up. But when the keyboard players show up, the drummers show up, when everybody, come on, shows up, then we're going to have the presence of God to show up in a greater area. See, the lack of us showing up hinders the presence of God. So I got some people that come and say, you know what, I went to church and, 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 and I don't agree with that and, 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 and nothing, I didn't feel the presence of God and, and nothing really happened. And I, I, I you know, I, th- I remember when it used to be like this and that. Well, the reason why it ain't like it should, was or should be because you were not doing your part. I think it's really criminal. I think it's criminal when people have, think they got a right to give an opinion for something they're not involved in. You have no right to say nothing if you ain't involved in it because you can make a difference. If there's something that needs to be corrected, get your fine self in there. You know what I wanted to call you. Amen. Get your fine self. Get involved. Start doing something that you can make. Then you can help make some correction, but you have no right to say nothing. I have people, oh, I remember when it used to be like that. Then you got to watch out for these old people. <laughs> got to watch out for these old people because they, they start getting back and they start getting away and then they want to just relegate it to everybody else and then they just think everybody else can do it and then they don't need to be involved. And you know, one of my biggest problems over here is not just the old people, Liz. I'm not doctor, you know. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> but you know what my big, and the other problem is, is the Overcomers Program. Men and women's program, you know what happened? When I started that 20 years ago, people in this church started backsliding, and they want the overcomers to do everything, and they're not doing anything. Listen to me, the overcomers getting some of the blessing, but you getting missed out on because you don't even understand. It's all of our responsibility to be involved. It's all of our responsibility. So the enemy works real hard to keep you from being able to get connected because he doesn't want you to flow. He wants you to keep you out of the flow where that you don't get experiences and the blessing that God has for you. So then you'll get connected, but then you can't stay faithful. Huh? I, okay, I'm going to get involved, so I'm going to raise my hand. Okay, I'm, okay, all right, I feel the pressure. I feel the pressure. I'm going to get involved. But, but then as soon as some little thing happens, then all of a sudden now you can't be faithful. You can't show up. You don't, you're not reliable, not dependable, and uh, therefore things start going the wrong way because you can't be faithful. Now, now, uh, let me show you this right real quick here. 
Uh, bring me my board for me, please. Let me show you this here. Just take your time. Been, y'all been waiting all day, and then you're going to take your time getting over here. Okay. Thank you. So you got the vision here. See, what the enemy don't want you to do is get your hands on the vision. Because, see, if you get your hands on the vision, see, then things will start happening for you. See, what the enemy wants you to do is stay in your seat and not put your hands on this because this is when you're saying, I'm ready to make a commitment to be involved and do what I can to help. See, I got to get my hands on there because that's what the change is going to be. Bring me another one. Bring me another one. Bring me another one. Look at here. See, but the vision is not just, this is the big vision, but we got other parts to the vision. Here's another part right here. Here's another part. I mean, this might be G12. This might be uh, life groups right here. But see, I got to get my hands on the part of the vision. Come on, bring me another one. Bring that other one here. No, because your blessing, your miracle, your healing, your deliverance is your connecting to the vision. Raise them up. Raise them up. See, here's where the real miracle happens. It's not about just saying I'm a part of it, but I get connected. I put my hands on it. This is where God's blessing comes. This is where the flow, the glory, the power, the anointing, the blessings come. It's not just going to church, but I put my hands on what God is doing in that church. I put my hands on it, and then God says, now I cause the flow to go in your direction. Because what am I doing? I'm lifting up somebody else. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about everybody else. You can lift up everybody that you can be a blessing to. Come on, y'all can shout act crazy or something. I thank God for the word and for what you've heard. And I'm believing that your life has been enriched through what you've heard. But now you need to make the next step, and that is accept Christ into your life. Won't you say this with me right now? Say, Lord Jesus, I open the door to my heart. I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that you died for me and you rose for me and I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. If you just did that, Christ is in your life. Heaven is rejoicing over you. I'm rejoicing with you. Please let me know that you did that. And we've got a free book we'd like to give you. Email us, write us, call us, whatever way you got to do it. And I'm praying that you'll find a good local church to grow in and make that commitment. Love you. Looking forward to seeing you next time. Uh, remember this, that the word works when you work the word. Positioning. To succeed in any aspect of your life, you must be in the proper position. But your blessing and your gifting and your talents are never going to manifest like you need to, until you get into a position where perfecting can start and the perfecting helps bring out the seed that is being sown through your, your being in the position and being perfected that brings out the abundance of harvest in your life. In Dr. Godot's latest series called For the Positioning of the Saints, you'll learn how to pinpoint where God wants you to be in your relationships, on the job, and even in ministry. Learn how to be in the right place at the right time in your life. For the Positioning of the Saints. Order the series today. Coming soon to Sacramento, our Creative Evangelism for Church Growth Conference. We will have workshops on how to reach this generation by using creative evangelism in multimedia, through theatrical arts, and even through comedy. Pastors, ministers, and church leaders learn how to use the visual arts as an outreach tool in your community. Mark your calendar for our Creative Evangelism for Church Growth Conference. For more information on this upcoming conference, just visit our website. You will not need to fight in this battle. This battle is not yours. It's the Lord. That's more than a song, people. It's the truth. Coming to Sacramento. 2015, Calvary Christian Center celebrates 35 years of ministry. It's March Miracles. God wants you to know the battle is not yours. The enemy didn't come against you, it came against God. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. He created you a specific, very unique way. We have to watch ourselves so that we don't get snared by the words of our mouth. In Isaiah 53, verses 5 and verses 11, it says, He took our sins 
He took our trespasses. He took our iniquities. Why? So that we wouldn't have to have them. We wouldn't have to be under the curse, nor would our family. It's March Miracles, exclusively in the capital city at Calvary Christian Center in Sacramento. For information on how you can help us celebrate, just head to our website. March Miracles is back. God is a God of principle. And I made this statement to Philip the other day, and I said, listen to me, principles never fail. It's people that do. Relationships that win, you'll learn how to work on you first if you want to improve your relationship with others. See, principles determine what God is going to do, and what we do is we determine what God's not going to do if we don't operate according to the principle. So I can never be mad at God. I, I just didn't function to do the principle that was available. Give, and it'd be given back to you. So if I give love, and if I give my time, if I, whatever I do, it's going to come back to me even more than what I gave it out to me. In, in every area of relationship, every area, I give mercy, mercy comes back. I give kindness, kindness comes back. I give love, love comes back. I give forgiveness, forgiveness comes back. But if I give anger, anger comes back. If I give bitterness, bitterness comes back. If I show judgment, then no mercy comes back. But judgment comes back to me. So it's a major principle in relationship is that I don't go into the relationship to get. I go into the relationship to give. Relationships that win. Order your copy today. Valentine's Day is right around the corner, and our marriage ministry is asking you to join us for our Jeans and Jokes Buffet Breakfast. No kidding. Here's your chance to romance your better half on Valentine's Day at the Double Tree Hotel in Sacramento. Plus, participate in our stand-up comedy competition. It'll be lots of fun. It's our casual Jeans and Jokes Valentine's Day Buffet Breakfast, exclusively for our married couples. Hi, I'm Dr. Philip Godot, and I just want to, again, thank you so much uh, for being a part of partnershiping with PGIM or A Father's Heart. You are making a huge, huge difference in your faithfulness, in your commitment to giving and being a partner with us. With your help. We not only commit ourselves uh, to praying for you, but we're believing for your greater blessing so that as we go forth, we could even do more. Thank you again uh, for your faithfulness. And we just release our faith and our agreement for you for any special need that you have in your life that God is going to meet that need over and above. In Jesus' name. Jesus thank you, thank you, and thank you. Yep. Amen. Amen. We are a family-friendly church that teaches the Word of God under the leadership of Drs. Philip and Brenda Godot. This is where the Word works when you work the Word. And now, here's some of our upcoming events. Calvary Christian Center is proud to announce our ministry expansion to help the poor and homeless through Safe Haven in Sacramento. It's showing the people's hope. Would you like a page? We're fulfilling the gospel by feeding the hungry and the forgotten. So we come here every Sunday and help out. Because a lot of people saw here, they feel that people don't love them. They feel that people don't have no compassion for them, and they feel that they are lost call. I love it. It's a great idea. Travis Hill is homeless but sees the ministry as a place where he feels loved and accepted. No one judges him here. Today, he's witnessing a transformation in ministry leadership led by Dr. Goodell. Then God said, now take them and put your anointing upon them so that Attorney Don Harris is going back into the marketplace. He helped found Safe Haven. He's turning the reins over to Bob Worthy. Bob Worthy is being installed as the new assistant pastor of Safe Haven. We pray, Father, today that your hand would be upon them in a big, powerful, and mighty way that their lives will never be the same again. 
I want you to stand up and shout out real loud. I take that responsibility before God in this congregation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's going to be another anointing, another man that is going to spring up inside of you. And God's going to bless your footsteps and he's going to order your ways. Do you receive that? I totally receive that. Well, stand up and say it. I receive that. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Knowing this ministry will continue is great news for Travis. There's some of them we can go and feel lost. Talk to somebody. Cry. Open up. And feel free to say, I love you, man. My name is Charlie. My name is Charlie. How you doing, my brother? You can't do that anywhere. But here. Because of your faithful tithes and offerings, Safe Haven will continue. Are you waiting for God to answer your prayers? In Dr. Godot's message, Expecting Kingdom Manifestations, you'll learn that in order to receive from God, you must have a spirit and attitude of expectation. Everything that is in the Bible, if it's in the Bible, it's in the Word, and it has anything to do with the covenant or my rights or privilege, I'm expecting, come on, Kingdom Manifestations. As you stand on God's Word, you should always expect He will fulfill His promises in your life. God wants to fulfill your greatest desires, but you must expect that He will first. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Quit complaining and griping about what hasn't happened. Won't you just let the past be past? Expectation brings manifestation. Order your copy today. Won't you start believing for something big to happen for you? Valentine's Day is right around the corner, and our marriage ministry is asking you to join us for our Jeans and Jokes Buffet Breakfast. No kidding. Here's your chance to romance your better half on Valentine's Day at the Double Tree Hotel in Sacramento. Plus, participate in our stand-up comedy competition. It'll be lots of fun. It's our casual Jeans and Jokes Valentine's Day Buffet Breakfast, exclusively for our married couples. Calvary, we're just days away from hosting Church Grown. We have quite a few workshops on tap for our Creative Evangelism Conference, from building top-tier leadership to our young adult ministry, to using social media, video, or even comedy as evangelism tools. To learn more about our Creative Evangelism Conference, just head to our website at calvarychristian.com. This has been a Philip Godot Ministries broadcast.